Okay, grafting. So let's talk grafting. Um, the point of that is to put day old or less larvae. They, remember the queen lays an egg, gets an egg for three days and then it hatches. And a larvae is in a hive that's gonna be a worker bee is fed royal jelly for the first day. After that, it gets honey. That low protein diet is what uh, makes the worker bee not develop uh, sexual organs. So the you want a queen, you want it fed royal jelly throughout its larvae stage. And so you want to get that worker out before its diet goes down. And you want to get them into your into your cups. So what I'm doing is I got a tool like this. It's got a, and this is an all plastic one. I just got these and I'm not super thrilled. The traditional ones, it's a little sheet of I think tortoise shell. It has just the right stickiness to the larvae likes to stick to it. These ones the larvae likes to slide back off again. But I'm getting better with them. But you are uh, gonna go into the cell, where the worker cell is, and you're gonna go down and dip, pick up that worker larvae, and put it into the cell, and then press like this little syringe type thing, and that will push the larvae off that flat piece on the bottom of the cell. And if you don't damage it, or, or and there's no contaminants in the cell, and you've got everything else just perfect, then it might develop into a queen. So I've got a frame here of just the right age. And I use a flashlight to look in the cells and also keep me focused, dip, undip, dip, undip. That's all there is to it. So I'll do a few. I don't think I need this light at the moment, but we'll keep it in here. And this is a, a good job. You get to kind of rest your head. If you hold your, uh, sometimes I even put my cap on backwards and kind of hold my head with my, uh, if the hand is holding the flashlight. Some people, and I have used like a headlight, but I found I was <laughs> leaning on my arm anyway, so kind of pointless. And these new laser flashlights that have a bit of focus to them are pretty sweet. Uh, not laser, uh, LED. And uh, so it's a bit like a welding job where you want steady, steady hands. You want to lean on something. You don't weld while you're doing your yoga stances. You, you just, you lock in, hold yourself steady, and the grafting's kind of the same thing. Okay, so now that I got my all that said, we get a larvae, <clears throat> and it looks like that. Uh, where is our camera here? There we go. So, oh, against my blue shirt. So there you can see a little bump, and then I'll push it off like that. And then once it sticks to the cell wall, then I push and also pull at the same time. And like most things in beekeeping, only the first 10,000 times are hard. After that, it's no big deal. If you're doing this, uh, you know, on a commercial scale, like I, as far as queen rearing goes, I'm strictly a uh, self um, provider. I'm not into, I hardly sell any cells at all. 
Uh, I'm looking to just feed my own operation. So I'm not set up for big volume. If you were doing this day after day, you would have your breeder colonies, we call them, or the, the hives that are being chosen as having the right characteristics. And so this, I'm choosing, uh, these larvae are from a queen that uh, caught my eye for being particularly uh, good across a range of criteria, nice and gentle, uh, got a real stripy butt that made her really easy to find. Uh, she's uh, three years old. She's uh, She's got whatever gene it is that makes things live a little longer. Uh, good honey production last year. And, you know, uh, and survived both, uh, especially last year when I had terrible losses. Uh, so queens that made it through that uh, attrition are attractive to me. Uh, whatever. Now, is she just lucky? Maybe. And so I won't graph from just one. I will be grafting from about five or six hives in some rotation. And if I'm short, I can't find the right grafting material one day, I will, uh, you know, look through some of my builder colonies, which were brought home for being nice and strong too. And after you've put that queen down below the, the queen excluder, uh, come back four or five days later, and there's just larvae everywhere. So that's the other thing is you can kind of keep in mind what your builder rotation is and, and find lots of graph material there. Uh, reason you definitely want to be, uh, especially maybe you're starting out, you kind of want to know how old these larvae are because you're leaving them in the hive and the first one that hatches will immediately try to kill all the rest. So if you sleep in one day or you, you know, suddenly there's a screw up, employee doesn't show up to work and you end up going to the field or something, uh, then you miss that day. You're not going to lose the one that hatches, you'll lose them all. So uh, one, you know, making sure you're not grafting from older larvae, uh, that you know in your eye what that looks like. And so, you know, if it's, but size is a perfect indicator. If it's the same size as an egg, only it's just a little curly, then you got the right age. As soon as they start having any growth, then they're too old. So I am picking and choosing here a little bit. And then the other reason I, I can afford to be a little bit chancy is that I have an incubator. So I will pull these things out typically a day or two early. That also gives me a little bit of a head start on that builder. They love to swarm. They feel those cells starting to get ready to hatch and that old queen will want to take off. You get those cells out a day or two early, work through that builder, make sure you knock down any queen cells it might have, like, you know, natural swarm cells, and turn it upside down again so that the queen's got lots of space to lay, maybe pull out any surplus honey so that, build, that uh, builder colony isn't wanting, even though you kind of want it to think it wants to swarm, you don't want it to actually swarm. And that's a delicate balance to try to create. So if you can, if you have an incubator, and then you can, uh, you have a couple more days margin of error on that. Okay, so that's three bars done so far. I'm gonna do 12, I won't make you watch do them all. But uh, that's grafting. And these will go, it does not really one of my steps because I do this every day. 
Uh, and once I think I have enough numbers built up, I might cut back to every second, every third day. But I need a shot of, uh, I'm going to, in fact, I'll be a little late getting these in. Um, it was so cool for so long. Thinking about queen rearing was, wasn't on the table. So uh, now I got to do big batches and try to get caught up on these. And but so I'll be grafting every day, but the steps are, you know, graft, starter, into the starter, and how we made that up, into the builder, and then about 10 days later, into the incubator for up to 24, 36 hours, into the, the hive, and really you want those cells to be almost chewing themselves out as you're putting them into the into the nuke, then you know you've got a, a winner. Um, so, starter, builder, hatch. It's that simple, folks. Have a great day.